Senna. Pals. Oh, well, I got confirmation tonight. With full certainty, this is the best movie of the year. What's going on, everybody? I am Jabby Koei, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? And we're talking about Godzilla Minus One. This will be two parts. Very brief non-spoiler, just to give Char a chance to tell you her thoughts before we go into our spoiler chat. Let's kick this off with a summary of Godzilla Minus One. What is this movie about, Char? The film is set in post-World War II Japan. Literally, they just got defeated by the U.S. They're living in this aftermath of the war and the PTSD and everything that has happened. Amidst that, there's Godzilla. A failed kamikaze fighter is trying to rebuild his life with this makeshift family and ultimately trying to redeem himself. Did that make sense? That, no, that made sense. I think that was a nice little summary of the, of the film. I feel like it's very much a Japanese movie. You know, in terms of pacing and, and tone, it starts off just kind of slowly. Although in the beginning, am I allowed to say this? Godzilla shows up very quickly. And it's like, oh, yeah, definitely a Godzilla movie. But then after that, it kind of like does the thing where it's just like very calm-ish until Godzilla shows up again. But it's like the pacing's really different from our run-of-the-mill Hollywood films, which is what I'm trying to say here. And so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, the movie just kind of seeps into your soul and you really care about the characters because the focus is on the human relationships and how war has affected these people. It feels very intimate and then it's also like, and there's a monster. With American action films like this, like Independence Day, you're often focused on the destruction. Yes. It's about the action. Like Independence Day, what sold you, you know, back in the day in those commercials was you seen that White House blown up. With Jurassic World, it's the monsters, the dinosaurs escaping and, and eating people and whatever, you know, causing destruction. With Godzilla, same exact thing. And so this has a very heavy emphasis on the human characters. Yes. Kind of like, you know, Jurassic Park. If you watch Jurassic Park again, it has a similar structure where you kick things off with a, an intense scene, and then you develop the human characters. And exactly. it's not until an hour into Jurassic Park that you actually see the T-Rex properly. Yeah. So. And, and here, again, it's just like the human characters and their stories are are just so compelling. It, it's also kind of like Jaws in, in that sure. regard as well, you know, like really great monster films. I feel like we have to kind of reference them and, and give props as well, but I didn't realize how much I started caring about the characters. I don't know what it is about the story and, and how it was told, but in the climax, I was like, oh my God, I'm crying. It's a Godzilla movie, and I'm crying. Yeah, it got me too. Um, I, I've watched it twice, and it still got me. This, I, I think it got me more the second time I watched it, to be honest with you. Because the first time I watched it, I did not have the optimal angle for it. I was sitting in the far right front of the theater because it was a screening. But for this one, I'm dead center, like the best seat in the house. I felt things again, if and if not more intensely. It's so well done. Yeah. Like the music as well, I thought was really great and was kind of referencing or hearkening back to maybe the original Godzilla, because I didn't realize that 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 sound, the dun, 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 and I was like, wait, I know that from a rap song, but I'm pretty sure the rap song didn't do that first. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a classic song. Yeah, that's where they got it from. Generally, I, I really enjoyed the visual effects. I thought that their decision to kind of make the Godzilla VFX the way that they did was actually a really good good choice because like the detail and stuff on him looked really good sometimes his movement was a little bit goofy especially when he was walking on land but i thought that that was actually a really cool choice because to me it seemed like it was paying homage to the old school uh godzilla that that you know we've seen clips of and stuff like that where he's kind of like just uh with his little t-rex arms just kind of clumping around but i thought that he was really scary i watched your review and i was like yeah i see what you're saying there about how sometimes the acting can feel a little, little bit over the top but i think that's also like it's a japanese flavor do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> I th I thought that the acting was good and, and maybe sometimes it's like a little bit over the top perhaps for American taste, but I'm like, that's just the, the, the flavor of acting in Japan okay, for so this. Let's go into our spoiler section. Yeah, 
at the very beginning of the movie, uh, you know, when Godzilla first shows up, watching that scene again, it was really neat because you, when you know what's coming, you know what to expect and you get to study it a little bit more. And I was just like, this is such a genius film. The water stuff, you know, when they're putting the, the bombs into the, into the mouth and, and trying to like do some damage to this thing, all of that felt very Jaws-like in a good way. Like I, I appreciated that having that Jaws experience in a Godzilla film. It was just super cool, you know, to see that, you know, brought into this universe. I just have to say this one thing about the storytelling in this movie. They say so much without saying too much explicitly. And so you, you really have to kind of, you know, pay attention as you're watching. And, yeah. and, and I feel like a lot of it kind of filters in through your consciousness via osmosis even, because the setup in the beginning is this young guy is a kamikaze pilot and you understand that at least from how most of the people are treating him or talking to him, it's considered to be a great honor. And then later on, you figure out like, oh, he doesn't want to do this. He's trying to make an excuse so that he doesn't have to, to fly. And in a way, the appearance of Godzilla saved his life. He didn't end up having to actually fulfill his duty. I mean, it's a, it's a tragedy because everybody else bar one other guy on that island dies. Yeah. And then he kind of, he goes back to Tokyo. You think, oh, his neighbor is gonna be really happy to see him. But instead she's like, uh, you didn't fulfill your duty. Why are you still alive? If you'd have done what you were supposed to do, my kids wouldn't be dead right now. And it was just like really interesting culturally to kind of see how people felt uh -huh. about it. And then to kind of have his whole character arc be that, you know, in the beginning, he's kind of painted to be this this coward or someone who's dishonorable because he didn't do his duty. And then by the end, he like willingly does it. But then ultimately, like you said, the, the main theme of the movie is like live. Like don't Correct. die pointlessly, yep. so live your life. To what you're saying, I feel like there is some neat stuff going on in this film that you don't get a lot of in a lot of these, you know, big epic monster films. We've gone on and on about the human characters and to what you just said, the neighbor comes out thrashing him basically yeah. for not com fulfilling his duty. He's a dishonorable soldier, right? And he's being blamed twice. Uh, he was blamed at the beach for not getting behind the 20 millimeter gun. Yeah, which the, would, he would have died. He would have died. He would have died, but like he's being blamed there for the deaths of all these yeah, engineers. Exactly. And then he's blamed by his neighbor for not fulfilling his duty and then people dying in the air raids. It's not necessarily his fault, but he's, you know, he's being held accountable for this. And so he's got a lot of guilt that he's living with. And the film places a heavy emphasis on that guilt. His goal really is he wants to die. You know, he wants redemption as he, well. He wants redemption, but like through death. That's what he's thinking. And so yeah. that's why he's like distant the entire film is he's like, no, like I can't give this to you even though I want it because I need to die. Well, I need to go and, hold on, I'm not done. He, <laughs> so I, like I gotta say this. So I, I wanna fulfill my duty as, as the kamikaze pilot is his whole thinking. And so his arc is accepting like he can fulfill his duty without dying, right? And he's able to pick living. He's able to pick, I'm going to live my life. And so with the neighbor, who's like, in an American film, that's a throwaway character. You forget about her. Yeah. She is present throughout the film and has her own arc because initially she's like, you should have died. And at the end, she's angry that he tried to die. Yeah. Like, and it's the same exact action. She's like slapping him at the end of the film, just like she was slapping him with the cloth in the beginning. I'm like, this is so fucking cool. This movie is awesome. Like that this character, everybody is important. And it's just like, it was a reminder watching it a second time, like how all of these characters have meaning in a way that you just don't get with American films right now. Regarding our lead character yes I agree with you about the whole like he feels like he ought to have died but I thought another thing that the movie did really well was address the effects of war mm -hmm. because he, PTSD yeah PTSD because he says I'm still fighting a war because it's not over for him all of that guilt all of that trauma um, everything that happened with Godzilla it's not over for him and he can't move on because he's he's stuck the there. The fat lady hasn't sang yet. Yeah, the fat lady has not sung. Talking about the neighbor and stuff, just like the idea of community uh, is so important in this movie and and in Japanese culture as well, right? Like, because the neighbor, like you said, is really important. She's like helping with the babysitting and whatnot for them. But also, it's so cool that in this story, the lead guy 
ends up kind of having this ready-made family when this random beautiful young woman crosses paths with him gives him this like little baby and he can't bring himself to abandon her and then they kind of just fall into his life yeah you know and then they take it upon themselves to raise this orphan child because i mean they they're orphaned now themselves as a result of the war they're like okay so this is what we do like yeah we help each other i thought it was actually really cool how wholesome the movie was yeah because if you look at the love story it's like i don't think you even see the two main characters ever kiss they don't ever kiss they don't ever like fully say that they love each other which is totally in line with like japanese culture as well right like you wouldn't sure they don't they would never say aishiteru yeah exactly yeah. you don't say that you just know it or you show it and well i talked to i remember i dated a girl and she said that her father only said it to her once wow and it's like a very powerful meaning here we throw the word love around like whatever yeah but in japanese culture it's like you might hear it from your parents one time <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so it was just like really interesting, their whole relationship dynamic, because for all intents and purposes, they were behaving like they were a family or like, you know, married. But then if anyone asked, they're all like, now. In American films, there's there's so much emphasis on, on sex. It's such a wholesome movie. I adore it. It's so <laughs> neat that they did that. But like the love that they feel for each other is so strong. Yeah, and not not even just like the love between the main male protagonist and the female character, but also his colleagues on the boat. You yeah, know? yeah. They form a really close bond. They feel like family. They're friends. And then at the end, when um, our, our dude doesn't end up dying, they're all like so happy. I want to shout out the, the doctor character because I thought he was great. He was one of my favorite characters because he seemed kind. Is that weird to say? Like, I liked I, all of them. I loved his kind eyes. No, I, the, the moment the moment we're introduced to them, in a way, it's like, it almost reminds me of Star Wars when Luke Skywalker sees the Millennium Falcon for the first time. He's like, this is this piece of junk. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, yeah. And so the, he sees the boat. He's like, this is the specialized boat. It's like, it's made of wood. It looks yeah. so flimsy. And it's like, no, actually, this is going to save our lives. Exactly. When you're introduced to the characters, I fell in love with them right away. Well, yeah. Like you said in your initial review, they're very specific. Even if we can't remember their names, we know Doc. We know the captain who's kind kid. of like quirky and the kid. Yeah. And then we've got our pilot. Like they're they're very clearly defined. Yeah. And even then the behavior, they're well defined as yeah. well. And there's like a nice little Dunkirk moment towards the end. I, I just want to say that before I forget because a <laughs> Dunkirk tugboat thing at the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Let's just jump into that real fast. There's this moment in the film where, you know, you think Godzilla is about to wipe everybody out. And it's not without merit to have that feeling. The movie slows down. The, so the sound is cut out. Yeah, that was powerful. And I'm like... You know, the first time I watched it, I'm like, oh, these people are all about to die. <laughs> like, it just, it really feels like it's going that direction, given how much destruction you've seen in the film. It properly primes you for that feeling because of just how many people you've watched die. And it's not like, every, every death in this movie counts, you know? It's not just like flippant destruction and there's no consequence. Every death has consequence in this film. Well, yeah, because every time you see uh, Godzilla come out, especially like when he was in Ginza, that was really powerful because like you're literally watching people run away and they're trying to get away and then like a, a building gets decimated and then like you see the little person running and then all of a sudden the debris just like covers them and they're gone. He lets out his like the heat breath or whatever and then all of a sudden it's like and everything gone. Yeah, exactly. And it's really sad because they already had this happen. Like when the Americans drop the bomb, right? <laughs> the bombs. So yeah, that moment towards the end of the film, like that to me, that was like the best climax I could possibly ask for because it's not just, you know, more destruction. Like there's this camaraderie that's all that's happening with all these people, and like I I care about everyone who's involved. And when our main character drives the plane into Godzilla's mouth, it felt like Independence Day to me. What you know, towards the end of the film, if you remember, like everyone was about to die, and then that crazy dude who who was crop dusting, you know, just flies his plane into the alien spaceship and right. destroys it. And so he saves the he saves the day. Watching it again, when he flies into Godzilla's mouth, you can see him eject himself out of the plane. Yeah, that I didn't. Yeah, see. it's like I was. I'm like, oh, there it is. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> One of those things. When when all that sound is cut out, 
and it's you're just watching all these people in slow motion i was like having to stop myself from welling up well yeah because it was so powerful because like they set things up so well like even the ejection seat they set that up when um i think it was the doctor or someone was talking about how in the war you know they didn't have choices they they had to do what what they were told to do the japanese government just didn't really care about the people yeah. and and you know they sent kamikaze fighters to to do their duty but didn't even give them planes with like ejection seats right and so uh, already i was like uh huh oh that's interesting and then later on when i saw the the engineer looking at the the new plane that he was working on there was something written on the seat like in german or something and i was like i bet I bet this seat ejects. And then sure yeah. enough, it does. And so I wasn't surprised, but I feel like there's a lot of, of payoff as well. Like even with the theme that you talked about in your review, standing up against the government or like the government doesn't care about you. Yeah, you're disposable. Yeah, you're disposable. And so like you really felt that because it was the government that was like, oh no, we're not going to tell the public because right. we don't want them to panic, which I guess I understand, but also like that sucks. Like you shouldn't do that. Well, information suppression is a big thing in Japan. I heard Japanese had to go overseas to find out what was up with Pearl Harbor. You know, like, because right. the, the way it's written in Japanese history books is that the Americans just attacked. A lot of Japanese don't realize what what exactly went on during that time because the history books are written differently. Right, of um, course. I guess it's to save face amongst their own people. I don't know, it's shame. I, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, every country I feel like will write history books to favor them in some way, shape or form, unless you're Germany. <laughs> <laughs> in Ger which case, they're yeah. very sorry. Ger Germany's very sorry. But outside of Germany, I feel like a lot of countries will have some sort of bias in their history book writing, right? Japan, I guess, takes it to another level. But this movie shines a light on all of that. Yeah. And it's like there's information. He says it straight up. The tall guy on the on the on, in the crew, he's like, oh, information suppression is what we're good at here. That's true. You yeah. Know? Like, and and they make a really big point out of like really emphasizing that in the movie. But you know, they're talking about how they're completely disposable but then they've got a group of ex-navy ex-military people together and they're like okay th this is what we have to do in order to save our community but you have the choice you can leave or you can stay and a lot of people leave because they're like no i have i have a family to look after and like i don't want to do this and it's like fine but then for the people that stayed you know you know that that they want to be here, that they believe in the cause and that they're willing to put up their lives. Even though the doctor, Doc was like, we're not about like using your lives as if they're expendable. Like right. the, the main goal of the mission is to come back alive. And so everyone was kind of like, cool. But I think that's why that moment when they cut out the music and they cut to all of the people on the ships, just like in shock and, and scared, but also resigned to their fate because you can see, like they set it up so well, you know when Godzilla's spines start to come out mm -hmm. and it's that like glowing blue color, yeah. you know, it's not good. Nothing can withstand that. Like right. you're, you can't run away fast enough. You're all gonna die. And then they cut out the music. And there was also one character who didn't really do much, but he was just like a kind of younger looking guy. I don't yeah. know if you, if he stood out to you, but he stood out to me because of his youth in comparison to everyone else on the ship. And I was like, oh damn, he's so young. Mm -hmm. He's probably gonna die. This sucks. And then cue the heroic music. Yeah. Koichi comes flying in. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So there's a few things I didn't like when I first watched it. And then watching it again, I'm like, yeah, I still don't like that too much. One thing is Koichi's like, he has a dream and or a nightmare rather. And he sees Godzilla and he screams. And his scream is just like the way it was recorded or the way he's screaming, it just it hurts. <laughs> And then uh, when he's crying after Akiko, or not Akiko, when he thinks his, his would-be wife that he's not married to. Noriko? She, when she pushes him out of the way. Yeah, Noriko. Yeah. When she pushes him out of the way and he, and you know, she dies. 
Yeah, that was and, dumb. And he cries out. Like, it's not her pushing him out of the way that I thought was dumb. I mean, I get what you're saying because you're like, she, she should have body, she should have jumped on top yeah, of him. Yeah, no, we were talking about this afterwards because yeah. you asked me what I felt about that. And I was just like, yeah, I think it's dumb that she didn't like use her body to, right, to push I get that. them together. I get that. So I thought it was, while contrived, I liked it for the film because it caught me off guard that she died. Yeah, yeah, definitely like, did. It just totally caught me off guard. But like when he cries, it's just like the way he cries, it, it's just like, it was very like screechy, like for my ears, you know what I mean? Like, Damn man. And I know, and no, it's fine to cry, it's fine. It's like, I totally don't mind that. It's just that I want to cry with him and I couldn't because it was distracting how he was crying. But that, sure. that's a me thing. That's okay. not necessarily because I, I haven't heard anyone else complain about that, right? And then when Godzilla was laying destruction right before she dies, there's news reporters on top of the building going, "Oh my God, Godzilla's coming right at us!" It's like you're just gonna stand. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it, it was. There was a little bit perplexing to me, and I feel like maybe that was done as an homage to something older, where that makes more sense or something, or it's just kind of the goofy trope from another Godzilla film. You know what I mean? And they yeah. just threw it, threw it in here. But for, for this film that is otherwise quite serious and grounded, like that just seemed weird. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Those are the three things that kind of jumped out at me as like, that's something I didn't enjoy. Watching it again, Noriko got destroyed, okay? <laughs> like when she shoves, uh, what's his name? Sasuke? K K K Koichi. Koichi. When she shoves him out of the way and gets swooped up in the damage, I'm like, there is no way anybody would survive that. No coming and back. That was the thing I was talking about in my non-spoiler review when I'm saying people are surviving stuff. That in addition to the whole radiation thing, which some people are telling me. We've got questions. Yeah, some people are telling me, oh, they totally survive, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I do. Oh, I mean, I'm, they'll survive for now. Who knows what the lasting you know. effects of radiation are in, in that situation. But, but it's a movie, so whatever. Watching it a second time and you caught it was, there was something on Noriko's neck. Yes. When she was petting um, Sasuke's head. <laughs> Koichi. Koichi's head. Yeah. Uh, when she was petting Koichi's head uh, in the hospital, first off, like when, <laughs> I was so shocked when I first watched it, I'm like, she's actually alive. Wait, you, okay, well, so you didn't you didn't clock I when did. she got the telegram? No, I did, but I'm okay. like, I'm thinking he's gonna go to the hospital and she's a vegetable. Like how, oh. what could he possibly hope to find? You know, she was swept up in carnage. Like, what does she look like? And like still hot. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is like the first time I watched it, I was just so shocked that she was looking at him and was fine, right? The second time I'm watching it, I'm like, damn, she looked fine. How <laughs> does she look good still? Like she was swept up in carnage. What was she in the hospital for a day? How is it possible that she no, looks No, she was in the hospital for a while. I know. I I'm was just kind saying, of disappointed in his character. I was being facetious. I'm just saying like she wasn't there that long to be healed like that. And so my assumption is that there's gotta be some kind of muta mutation. That's what that black stuff on her neck was about. Yeah, something's, something's up there for yeah. sure. It's, anyway, it's sus. No, why are you disappointed? No, I was just disappointed because if I were him, I think I would have been like, they must have some sort of survivor's list or, or like something at the hospitals or whatever. I would have been trying to see if anyone found her body or anything. I don't know, maybe it was just too bad. Like. You know? Oh, I didn't even think about that. When I'm watching the film, the first, in, even the second time, I'm like, well, she dead. Like, no. there's just, she just they, died. They said that there were like, okay, so fine. Like 30,000 people were dead and or, and or injured or whatever. So I'm like, okay, well, if you really cared about her, wouldn't you be going and trying to find out definitively if she was dead or alive? But I, I guess, guess he, no, he was right. busy. He had to raise a child, whatever. You're, you're, you're not wrong. But then that would have distracted from the movie. It's, I know it was a know. tight. It was a tight film. Um, they kept it moving while still feeling like kind of slow paced. Yeah, but I feel like all of that worked to its advantage. It really did because yeah. um, it, it helped the emotions build. Yes, I think the thing that I loved about the one of the things I loved about the third act of the film, or okay, it depends on how you look at film structure, I suppose. But okay, the climactic moment of the film, mm -hmm. let's say, 
is when it, the music starts building up and you, you, it starts off with the four ships taking off after Godzilla destroys the, the decoy. Mm-hmm. And they're like, there's this, this riveting music that kicks in and like all the action starts happening and you're like, this is it. This is what we prepared for. And it's like, it feels so fucking good. It's so heroic. Yeah. Cause it's just like, it's a story of just regular people granted they have experience in the navy and and whatnot but still regular people who have just come out of war and who are willingly going out there to save their country again yeah anyway loved it i loved it again um it's a great film yeah i would like genuinely i'm surprised how moved i felt in a godzilla movie like i don't often feel that way when i'm watching godzilla I don't often feel that way. I'm, I don't often feel that way when I'm watching a film that fits this category. Yeah, you know, but it does what a great film like this should do. Going back to things like Jurassic Park, going back to things like Jaws, where it's like the people matter. You know, the characters matter, and you feel for what they're going through. And when someone dies, you feel that. It's not just this throwaway thing like, oh, well, moving on, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, oh, whoopsie. Yeah. I, consequences. Like, there are consequences to things, you know, and it's great. Anyways, you guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this discussion and uh, let us know your feelings in the comments below. Is it the best film of 2023? <laughs> I know that some people are like, no, it's Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. I'm yeah, like... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a great film. I don't think it's my, like, best film of 2023, but it's... What is yours? I don't have one yet. The year's over, but anyway. Shut up. <laughs> um, it's the best film of 2023, hands down. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Achara Cook. Peace out.